Dear students, today we shall be talking on the coloration in mollusca and particularly we shall be emphasizing on the coloration in case of cephalopoda. Before proceeding, it is my request to you all to press the bell icon and subscribe my channel BioLearnia. To study the coloration in case of the cephalopods, we need to find answer for two questions. One question is why cephalopods need to change color and what is the mechanism behind the change of coloration in the case of these very cephalopods? That is how do cephalopods change color? They are basically, now the answer to the first question is there are basically two reasons for the change of coloration or the color change in the case of cephalopods. One is communication. It is the communication not among the species, not within the species, but among the different species as well. It can be intraspecific or it can be interspecific. The second reason is camouflage. That is, they need to hide. They need to protect themselves. They need to protect themselves from the predators. And secondly, they also need to hide so that they can attack on their prey. Now, here in this very slide, we are seeing the fascinating world of the mollusks. Having awesome coloration, having mesmerization, mesmerizing coloration here in the rightly from the gastropods up to the cephalopods. We see that they have the different coloration such as gastropod, we see the octopus, we see the sepia, we see the again octopus, we see uh, different kinds of the gastropods and we even the chiton. We see different colors in the case of chiton as well or we even see different kinds of coloration in the case of the land snails as well. Now the first reason that I was telling you, that first reason is communication and the second is camouflage. First of all, we shall be discussing the camouflage. Now when we talk about the camouflage, it is usually a cephalopod's primary defense against the predator. That is, they are using this ability, this capability as the primary defense against the predators. As the cephalopods don't have any kind of protection, that is many animal, um, many animals of different groups, groups, they have different kinds of defensive mechanisms. Many, some have poisons, some have hard shells, some have exoskeletons, some have horns, some have antlers, some have mucus, some have scales. But in this very case, these very cephalopods do not have protection of the hard shells. And like many other mollusk relatives, they make an easy to digest meal for the hungry predator. So for the hungry predator, the cephalopods are the easy prey. So nature has given them the ability to protect themselves by changing the color, by hiding with the help of the coloration. So it is one of the remarkable achievements in the case of the cephalopods. Therefore, the most of the cephalopods try to avoid being seen, to avoid being eaten. So, as well as predator avoidance, camouflage also be used when lying in wait for unsuspecting prey to come nearer. So, on one hand, they hide themselves from the predators and on the other hand, they hide so that they can go closer to their prey as well. So, this is the remarkable efficiency, this is the remarkable mechanism in the case of the cephalopods who don't have any kind of the protection in the form of the hard shells. Now, one of the, one of the mechanism to hide themselves as a part of the camouflage is resembling the background. So background resemblance is the most well-known form of the camouflage. So this is when the animal changes its color and texture to match as closely as possible to that of the background. 
So the, here in this very picture, we are seeing the gastropod. In this very picture, the, there is the example of the gastropod, but we will be um, seeing another um, cephalopod as well. So what this organism has done, he has uh, this very uh, organism has nashed itself to the background so that it can look as if it resembles the background so that it can hide. Here in this very example, we are seeing the octopus. It has closely resembled to the background. So there are two things one is the change of coloration and other is change of the texture as well even in this very diagram that is the um, this very octopus you see that even it is resembling the muscles are resembling to that of the granules of the sand as well so this is the remarkable efficiency in the case of cephalopods and cephalopods use their chromatophores to change color to match the brightness of the environment they are attempting to blend into and some can even change the texture using the muscles in their skin as I was telling you. So the another feature is are the part of the camouflage is deceptive resemblance that is to deceive. Now how do they deceive? What is this very deceptive resemblance? So this is simply trying to blend to the background. Some cephalopods, they will attempt to make themselves appear as a specific object of the environment. Now, for example, in this very case, what we are seeing, it is the CPO tuthis or CPO tuthis CP idea, which tries to resemble the floating sargassum weed. So as to resemble the a weed which is present in the environment so that it can deceive its predator so that it can deceive its prey so that the prey can come closer there is one more example of the octopus cyania cyania one octopus cyania is another example that it has also been seen swimming in a manner that makes it appear like a reef fish so this very octopus resembles or deceives the um, their prey by looking like that of the reef fish and, and so that it can come closer. Then another feature is disruptive patterning. This is another form of you can say hiding. This disappear patterning is seen in many creatures as well as in the case of octopus or the uh, cephalopods and it serves to break up the outline of the animal to confuse the predator. For example, in this very uh, picture, we are seeing that if this would have been the same color, for example, I may be, I may be using the uh, under shade for example if this will be having the same color like that of the one outline like that of the one outline it will be easily recognized by its predator that okay this is looking like an octopus but what happens in this very case what is disruption that a part is disrupted the coloration it is disrupted at this very place for example this very part it is disrupted and it looks as if there is a break this part is one part this part is one part and this part is another part so it is not looking like an octopus so the predator of the octopus will think that it is not a predator so it involves the chromatophores which are used to create the sharply contrasting patterns on the on the body and often wide stripes like this in the um, like this one on the body and often these very wide straw stripes are the spots are created so this is the best scene in the case of the cuttlefish who employ this very technique more readily than other cephalopods so this very part wherein there is a disruption of the color we see that it is a disruptive patterning now, one of the best mechanisms uh, shown in the case of the cephalopods, it is the counter shading. Now, what we are seeing in this very, um, now counter shading, it is also called the thyers law. Thyers law. 
Now, what is this very counter shading? What you are seeing here, for example, let me tell you that what you are seeing here, that you are seeing that half of the body is light. It is light towards the bottom and it is darker towards the upper side. So what is the significance of this very counter shading? So, if the predator from the bottom will look upward, it will look as if the light, the light coming from the upper surface. And if the predator will see from this very side, the predator will think that this is the dark bottom of the sea. From the, you can see, if the predator is seeing this animal from an, a distance. So in this way, the um, this very um, you can say counter shading helps the animal to uh, to um, cheat the predator. And this very counter shading or the Thayer's law is the method of the camouflage in which an animal's coloration is darker on the upper side and lighter on the underside of the body. So, for example, uh, uh, for instance, uh, I have I told you about this very squid that spends much of their time in the mid water rather than uh, on or near the bottom and can be seen easily by the predators from below. So, counter shading is used to help the cephalopod to blend in when there is no substrate against which to match itself. So, from the lower side, it looks as if it is the light because this is the brighter side on the lower side and from the upper side, it looks darker and as if this is the bottom of the or the soil or the bottom of the you can say water body. So again, in this very case, and this is this is also called as the roll counter shading reflex of the sepia, so as to get rid of the predator um, um, by by confusing it uh, the predator. So one of the best mechanism, one of the very very advanced mechanism, or this very mechanism is uh, sh shown by uh, different animals as well, and it is called the dematic behavior. Dematic behavior is often used when the camouflage fails. Now, what I am um, what I am trying to show here in this very um, very picture that actually this is a this is a moth. But when you just see at this very picture, you see as if this is the snake, standing snake. This is the standing, standing snake like this. And these are the eyes of the snake. And this is the mouth of the snake. So that the enemy which is approaching this very mouth will at once get stunned and will, uh, and will think that this is somewhat very much dangerous animal. So this very mechanism is adopted by the animal when all the camouflage techniques or the coloration technique fails. So this is called as the dematic behavior to look, look as a very, very, you can say strong animal, very, very, you can say, um, very, um, very big animal, very strong animal. So, it involves changing rapidly from the color it has or it was using to blend into its environment to the bold contrasting characters, many contrasting colors many a times. So, many a times changing the color to the bold contrasting characters so as to make the predator aware that okay i am not a normal animal i can go up to a certain extent i i can go up to any extent to protect myself and mostly this is the blood color which is which is used by the this very octopus so as to look ferocious so some of the species of octopus, they will change, change instantly from their mottled appearance to the bright white with the black around their eyes. So this is the contrasting, that is white and black, this is the contrasting color again. And the dematic behavior usually also involves the body postures that make the animal appear bigger than it is. So this is also a dematic behavior to appear more stronger, more bigger 
this is also called as dematic behavior so if this does not work and the animal is still threatened the cephalopods then usually ink and jet away so inking uh, we have talked about the inking ink in the case of mollusca in uh, in our previous lecture so if this very coloration fails then the ink is the last option to get away or to um, just uh, shun away from the predator so the second um, thing we were talking about that one um, one is that why do cephalopod change color that one is the camouflage that is to hide and um, from the predator and from the prey and other is the communication so this is the best way of the communication as well the color change are the change of the color are talking or the communication by the color is also um, the one of the advanced techniques we call it as the communication so another part that why do several reports change color the answer is that to communicate among the species within the species and among different species as well so several reports use color change as well as the body postures to communicate with the members of their own species as well as the members of the other species many cephalopods have the courtship displays in which the males attempt to attract the females so this is very dwelled in the squid and cuttlefish but is less common in octopus in which complex courtship rituals are not yet seen so this very kind of communication where the where the there this is used for the attraction or to attract the mates is mostly seen in the case of the uh, mostly in the case of the cuttlefish and the squids but it is very much less found in the case of octopus many cephalopods have the courtship displays in which the males attempt to attract the females by using chromatic displays that is displays by the change of the colors we call it as the chromatic displays to which they are uh, they, they are able to find the suitable mates so this is well dwelled in the squid and cuttlefish but less common in the case of the octopus uh, wherein such kind of rituals are not seen and often during the courtship the males will not only have to attempt to attract the females but also to fend off other males as well so this very coloration is not only used to attract the males or the females but this very coloration is also used to show off the show of the predators or the other uh, sorry um, here in this case other mates males other males or the mates so that the um, this will act as a mechanism to ward off to fend other males from coming closer to the Uh, females wherein the chromatic you can say behavior is used to attract the females then um, this very chromatophores that how these very chromatophores um, we we had the another question that how do these very cephalopods change color the answer is chromatophores and it is not only the chromatophores we do have the um, we do have the leucophores we do have the iridophores we do have the photophores that we shall be talking so chromatophores the first of all we shall be talking about the chromatophores which are one of the reasons for that how they change color the chromatophores are neurally controlled the first thing you have to keep in mind that they are neurally controlled the animals may be able to produce a pattern on one side of its body to attract the female while producing another pattern on the other side which it directs the other males for example for example in this very for example this is this is the animal now many times what happens that these very animals they change the color on one side and they use another color on the other side for example if this very side is towards the female if this very side is towards the uh, female 
if this very side is toward the female so they are using the attractive color colors to to attract the female and on the other hand if on this very side there is another male or there is another um, possible uh, you can say uh, counterpart uh, which is um, which is competing so they will be having this different coloration on this very side so that this coloration will be a kind of the signal to this very male that don't come closer so this is also a mechanism so we call it um, we call it as the patterning so fighting between the males also exhibit a lot of the communication in the squids aggression involve mostly the displays and very little physical contact so they don't fight by coming closer and just um, um, have a boxing no they just fight by changing the colors by um, by displaying the colors and in the squids aggression involve mostly displays and i just i was telling you that very little physical contact is involved and the squid will often show chromatic displays and the body postures with increasing intensity until one backs down so in the midwater what we see that in in the midwater what we see that the organs and the photophores are thought to be used for communication so those very animals which are in the midwater they have the only option of having the photophores to be used as the communication uh, you can say like, um, communication mode so in the same way as the color is used in the shallow water bio, bioluminescence is another method method which can be used where there is less light to attract the mate to lure the prey and to dissuade the predators as well so if there is um, there is very um, you can say less light bioluminescence is another option so if in the in the mid waters the photophores are used for the communication so and if the water is very much shallow the different kinds of coloration can be seen in the case of the animal so this is the this is the mode of the communication which is seen in the case of these very animals so predator avoidance it may also involve some forms of the communication to the predator as with the dematic behaviors showing a predator that it has been spotted and attempting to made make itself larger and more frightful than it is will at least often make a predator stop and think and giving vital seconds for the escape so what i was telling you about the dematic behavior that in this very behavior animals tries to look like a ferocious animal more bigger than the size or more um, like like someone which has the poison or the you can say um, poison glands or uh, having uh, certain or maybe venomous so at least the predator will have a second to think before attacking and this these very seconds are very much important for this very cephalopod to escape so on the other hand if the bluff is successful the predator may back away and thinking that it is not a easy target which can be anticipated now let us have a little bit of discussion on how cephalopods change color cephalopods have often been referred to as the chameleons of the sea now this is very much important point um, that uh, cephalopods they have such a remarkable ability to change the color that they are called as the chameleons of the sea however the members of the cephalopod family with exception of the nautilus that is these very nautilus um, they don't have the ability to camouflage uh, or the change color so besides this these very nautilus the others have the ability to change the color and that is even more impressive than that of the chameleon on land so unlike unlike chameleon many cephalopods change um, color producing cells which are which are controlled neural, neurally which allow them to change colors at an alarming rate now talking about the chromatophores that the patterns and the colors seen in the cephalopods are produced by different layers of the cells 
So we do have the different layers of the cells which are stacked together. It is the combination of the certain cells operating at once that allows the cephalopods to possess such a large array of the patterns. So these very cells, they are stacked one on another and there is a proper procedure of the combination of the different cells, how they are placed. So for example, in this very case, it has been seen that the part of the skin which is enlarged and herein this very part which is further enlarged and to see the different kinds of the chromatophores are seen under the skin. So the most well known of these cells it is the chromatophore. So chromatophore the cells which help in the change of the color which help to uh, in the communication as well as the camouflage the chromatophores play an important role because they they help to the change in the color of different forms so the chromatophores are the groups of the cells that include an elastic saccule so elastic saccule kind of the these are elastic saccules that hold the pigment so we are in this very picture we are seeing that the different kinds of saccules having the different colored pigments they are in a proper sac and as well as 15 to 25 muscles are attached to this very saccule so as to control them and um, as we talked in our earlier slide that it is under the nervous control as well so these cells are located directly under the skin of the cephalopods so when the muscles contract they stretch the saccule, saccule and allowing the pigment inside to cover a larger surface area so when the muscles relax the saccules shrink and hide inside the pigment so you have to keep in mind that that when the muscles contract so when the muscles contract the saccule expand when the muscles re uh, relax the saccule contract so the when the saccules contract the pigments hide inside the sac so unlike other animals the chromatophores in the cephalopods they are neurally controlled with each chromatophore being attached to a nerve ending so every cell every saccule has a nerve ending so in some squids each chromatophore muscle is innervated by two to six nerves that directly link the animal's brain so in this way animal can increase the size of the one saccule while decrease the size of the another one and right next to it so it means that whatsoever color it tries to have it will expand that very saccule whereas it can shrink the other saccule which color it does not require so this allows the cephalopods to produce complex patterns such as zebra stripes can also be produced for example in this very in this very uh, the on which my pen is now uh, going on this very part we can see the zebra stripes so zebra stripes are seen in this very animal as well so this is a complex mechanism even the zebra stripes can be seen in the aggressive displays by the cuttlefish so the speed at which this can be controlled allows the animal to manipulate these patterns in a way that makes them appear to move across the body so this very patterning is very fast this is this happens in seconds so that the organism have the time to escape from the predator so in some species the cattle cuttlefish it has been noted that while hunting the cuttlefish may produce a series of stripes that move on their bodies and arms even arms so some scientists have suggested that this could be used to mesmerize the prey before striking so by changing these very colors the, the prey many times thinks that what is happening and um, the prey me gets mesmerized and this gives the ample time to the cephalopod to attack its prey so but for the purpose of this behavior there uh, it has not been proven yet that um, okay this can be the reason so the pigments in the chromatophores can be black brown red orange or yellow 
they are not they are not responsible for producing the blue and the green colors as seen in some you can say a species so we have different kinds of the chromatophores they can be black they can be brown they can be red they can be orange and yellow even but but uh, we do not find the blue and the green colors blue blue and the green colors so we will see that what happens to this very blue and green color if present that how they are produced that we shall be talking so besides the blue and the green color other other colors are many um, mostly found so in some uh, interestingly in some deep water forms they possess fewer chromatophores as they are less useful in the environment so it is obvious that many times the uh, if somebody asks you question that the um, chromatophore display is more in the shallower water or in the deeper water you can say obviously it is the it is the place where in the light can reach because the predator has to see the color the prey has to see the color in the darkness nobody is able to see the color then what is the fun of producing the color so mostly in the deeper waters the photophores are the bioluminescence uh, plays an important role so this is the point so it is useful in the so um, the chromatophores as they are less useful in the environment in the little or no light so um, let us have a have a little bit of uh, example by taking the chromatophores in the case taking the example of the chromatophores in the case of lolico and we are able to see that if we take the enlarge the part of the skin uh, of the uh, uh, lolico iridophores are found in the next layer of the chromatophores so the first layer is that of the chromatophores and the next layer is that of the so for example this is the this is the skin so this will be this will be the layer of the chromatophores and then there will be the layer of the iridophores iridophores after the chromatophore so first it is the chromatophores the other it is the iridophore then we will see that what will uh, what will come next so iridophores are layered stacks of the platelets that are chitinous in some species and protein based in some other so it means that they are the stacks of the platelets which are protein based or chitinous based in many species and they are responsible for producing the metallic looking now here is the comes comes the question that how come this they look as if the metal they they just um, uh, they look as if the metal is glittering so the metallic appearance is because of these very iridophores so it is the metallic looking greens and the blues are the golds are the golden color green color blue color is because of these very iridophores and many times silver color around the eyes um, and the ink sac um, is also produced so what happens in the case of iridophores they work by reflecting the light it is actually they are not doing anything new but they are reflecting the light that um, that um, comes towards it and can be used to conceal the organs as it often the case with the help of the silver coloration around the eyes and the ink sacs so it is actually reflecting the light and it conceals the organs and when we talk additionally they assist in concealment and communication as well previously it was thought that these colors were permanent and unchanging unlike the other colors produced by the chromatophores so new studies on some of these species suggest that the colors may change in response to the changing levels of certain hormones however these changes are obviously slower than the neurally controlled chromatophores so it means the chromatophores do play an important role by acting fastly rather than that of the others so iridophores can be found in the cuttlefish some squid and some species of the octopus so iridophores are also uh, found in uh, many of the cephalopods but it is the chromatophores uh, the layer of the chromatophores comes first and then comes the layer of the iridophores so it is the iridoph iridophore which gives the green blue golden and the silver appearance to the cephalopods to many cephalopods 
So the, then the third, it is the leucophore. So leucophores are the last layer. So it is the first layer is chromatophores, second layer is iridophores, then the third layer is leucophore. So leucophores are the last layer of the cells and are responsible for the white spots occurring on some species of the cuttlefish. For example, here if the, we enlarge this very part and you are able to see that this very part where my pen is right now uh, moving, these are the white, uh, you can say, skin patches which is because of the leucophores. So leucophores are the flattened branched cells that are thought to scatter and and reflect the incoming light. In this way, the color of the leucophores will reflect the predominant wavelength of the light in the environment. So in the white light, they will be white, while in the blue light, they will be blue. And it is thought that this adds to the animal's ability to blend to its environment. So this is also an important feature. By the presence of the leucophores, they also help in blending to the environment because under the blue light, they look blue and, uh, and many a times they, it helps to, um, uh, to have a good, uh, you can say, um, protective mechanism by blending the color. So, um, cephalopods have the one final ability to change the color pattern and that is because of the photophores. So, these produce light by the bioluminescence. So, bio, it means living and the light it means um, luminescence it means light so it means when a living organism produces light we call it this very mechanism as the uh, bioluminescence and the the cells which help in the bioluminescence which call them as the photophores and many a times it is the photophore which help in the production of the light and many a times there are certain bioluminescent bacteria which are present on the skin of the certain animals and they help to produce the light so the photophores are found in the most midwater and the deep sea cephalopods and are often absent in the shallow water species so the sh in the shallow water the chromatophores are mostly present where in the deeper waters it is the photophores which are usually present so bioluminescence is produced by the chemical reaction similar to that of the chemical light yeah, stick so photophores may produce light constantly or the or flash light intermittently so they can produce the continuous light or they can produce the intermittent light by just glowing uh, glowing and then stopping glowing and stopping just like the flash of the light now the mechanism for this is not yet known that how they are able to um, um, produce the light many times this very mechanism is not yet understood very nicely but some species have sacs containing the resident bacteria that produce the bioluminescence such as tiny squid we do have the euprimna Euprimna, it is a squid which has the resident bacteria in it and helps to produce the light midwater squid use the photophores to match the dawn welling light or to attract the prey so it is the use of these very cells in combination that allow the cephalopods to produce amazing colors and the patterns which are not seen in any family of the animal so however not all the species of the cephalopods possess all the uh, cells which are described um, in um, during this very lecture so, for example, we do have the photophores. They may necessarily, they may be necessary for animal in deep water environment, but are often absent in the shallow water forms. So, deep sea species may possess fewer or even no chromatophores, as their color changes would not be visible in the environment with no light. So. When we talk about these very chromatophores on the skin of the loligo, we do have this certain re recent research which suggested that there are many or there may be some correlation between the amount of the chromatophores and, uh, and hence the complexity of the patterns available and the type and the complexity of the cephalopod environment. So it is the environment and the organism which 
which um, have the correlation in between in the formation of the chromatophores. For instance, we talked about this very earlier as well. For, for instance, midwater species may possess fewer chromatophores, while the species living in the reef type environment may possess more because reefs are very much colorful. Reefs are having the light, and thus the those very organisms which are present in the reef they may be having the uh, good uh, you can say capability of the coloration. So, however, for the research still needs to be conducted in the area so uh, let us have the little this these very examples these are the photographs by the r henlon um, in their research paper which i have used to just to for the ed educational purpose for example we were talking about the zebra stripes on the on the uh, the squid so we do have the zebra pattern which is called a dematic or the threatening pattern as well or you can see the false eyes false eyes present on this very um, squid so this is also a dematic behavior or the one of the behavior which is used to shoo away the predator as well and there in this very case we are also seeing the dematic behavior by into the blending into the background as well so we do have the we do have the um, this very uh, cuttlefish here in this very cuttlefish which has camouflaged itself on the checkerboard so this is also a kind of the disruptive patterning seen in the case of the um, high contrast um, patterns which are seen in the case of the cuttlefish so we do have the octopus here you are seeing the octopus here now what is octopus doing the uh, octopus uh, is having the camouflage which is showing the rapid transition so you are seeing here in this cage the camouflage which has which has camouflage just like a, that of the rock by by changing its shape of the muscles as well so as to blend itself to the environment so this is a kind of the very much advanced mechanism seen in, seen, uh, seen in the case of the you can say these very organism and this is the coloration in the case of the you can say uh, these very squids lolico or the um, you can say uh, these um, sepia so this was all about the coloration in the case of the mollusca thank you thank you very much for um, uh, watching um, I hope this will be uh, very much useful to you and uh, it is my request to you all to press the bell icon and subscribe my channel bio thank you very much